There's a confluence of problems coming to a head between GPU makers, GPU makers like Nvidia, who are forced to pull more and more power to get competitive generational gains, and power supply makers like these. And the problem is that these two groups shift the blame between each other when a customer system does something like this. And that's why today we're going to investigate transient power consumption spikes, where the power consumption of a GPU, for example, might jump from 291 watts over two times to 664 watts. And that's just with today's GPUs. It's going to get worse with the RTX 40 series. Before that, this in-depth video is brought to you by us and store.gamersnexus.net. We self-funded this huge project with your support from the GN store. We just got a huge restock of our high quality red and black HUD mouse mats, which are desk sized mousing services with custom red rubber underside, red stitching for anti-fray and a high resolution print. We also just restocked our top selling product, the black and blue wireframe mouse mats, which have CPU coolers, RAM, motherboards, and more depicted on a mat that's built to last. If you want even more functional products, our 10-piece toolkits for GPU disassembly and PC maintenance recently got a seven-year retroactive warranty and also have autographed variants. Visit store.gamersaccess.net to help us out on our next piece like this. Recent rumors have painted a concerning picture for the future of GPUs, or at least for the future of the NVIDIA RTX 40 series where now the discussion is moving away from average power consumption and instead towards transient power spikes, or basically massive spikes that are largely unaccounted for that may only last up to 100 microseconds and yet are enough to, in the blink of an eye, shut down the system in basically the same way as OCP would or overcurrent protection. So that's the problem that we're looking at for the future of video cards and it's something that has to be accounted for today. This is actually something that's been building for a long time. We've seen evidence as far back as the 10 series and maybe even before that. The difference is that today's GPUs are being designed to nominally draw far more power and therefore the transient spikes are far more likely to knock a power supply offline and shut it down. And so the fastest recap possible is that this issue looks something like this. We can show all kinds of charts and oscilloscope shots to detail this issue, and we will today. But ultimately, from the user experience end, that's pretty much how it looks. If it's the wrong mix of CPU, GPU, and motherboard, then you might end up with a very difficult to troubleshoot problem that just trips power sometimes. It's hard to pinpoint which exact component is causing that. The power supply might be an easy fix, but the motherboard too is involved. So the system will just shut down and you'll lose anything unsaved or progress in whatever you're working on. And the problem is that it is a mix of all of these things. The real issue is that it's not just as simple as it used to be. For the most part, you can take the average power consumption of the CPU and the GPU and figure out an appropriate power supply for those two. Now, however, you should also be baking an additional headroom to your power supply selection for potential transient spikes, especially at the high end with the RTX 30 series and probably the RTX 40 series as well. In our lab testing here, on this machine and just with real world test benches and computers, we've seen that some motherboards handle this far better than others. We've also seen that some video cards handle this better than others and some power supplies. So it's an intermittent problem and that's frustrating for consumers without a lab full of equipment to just identify where it came from. That's where we come in. Here's the issue. We'll explain this chart in more detail a little bit later, but we wanted to get this up front too. This chart shows GPU power consumption under different scenarios in the game Doom Eternal. The RTX 3090 Master pulled 291 watts under average power draw over an extended period, and this is true with either a slower current clamp or with Nvidia's power draw measurement tools, like the PCAT analyzer. But its blue and red bars paint another story. The same card, when tested with our oscilloscope instead, which is far faster, pulled 664 watts at its peak transient spike. That's enough to put serious strain on power supplies that can't soak the temporary burst. That's a 129% increase in power drop, more than double from the baseline average power consumption. And that shows a major part of the story of these cards getting left out in at least our testing, which we're working on addressing starting with today's video, where now we and a lot of other reviewers mostly rely on average power consumption metrics. 
that's enough to sort of estimate how much the computer will cost to run, or at least the video card will cost to run. It's enough to do a head-to-head -head comparison for overall power efficiency or performance per watt. It's also enough to estimate the heat being produced by the device, because ultimately the average overuse is what matters for all of those scenarios. What it's not enough for is to know what the chances are of a power supply that's on the border of supporting this particular card to be able to stay up and not have an OCP drop. So that existing testing methodology, it has to change. And that's what we've been working on with this for a couple of months now, just improving behind the scenes. Because it cuts out the entire part of the story where you're looking at transient spikes that are probably the source of a lot of systems just shutting down out there where people are posting on forums having difficulty pinpointing the exact issue and no one wants the issue to be their video card. They don't want to blame the video card because they had to fight hard for it and it was expensive. So everybody wants the problem to be a cheaper component or an easier to source one, like a power supply or a motherboard. You can get lucky with that, but the GPU is sort of ultimately at the center of attention. And this is why we continually overhaul our own testing processes to capture more of the picture of the component we're reviewing. Now back to this issue, small form factor power supplies will be the most at risk of sinking under this demand. As we saw in our NZXT H1V2 testing with a high-end CPU and high-end GPU, the small form factor power supply just couldn't take it. Small form factor power supplies in particular struggle more with this because they have more limited real estate to actually build out the power supply and therefore reduce capability of dealing with these sudden spikes they're more likely to just shut down from OCP. So that's the preview. And now it's time to talk about how all of this works and what it means for you building computers and what it means for the industry. Talking with power supply manufacturers, they're being told by Nvidia to bulk up on capacitance and better technology and capabilities to deal with these transient spikes, especially from the RTX 40 series, where we're looking at baseline power targets of around 450 watts based on some of the leaks that are out there now for higher end cards. And that's just the baseline. If you're spiking a couple times that, you could see where it starts to introduce problems. Now, power supply makers, of course, think this is NVIDIA's fault. NVIDIA thinks it's the power supply manufacturer's issue to deal with. And both of them have reasons to push the blame onto the other one. Power supply makers generally think it's unreasonable for NVIDIA to push all of the requirement of dealing with transient spikes onto them and think instead that NVIDIA should be doing better at a GPU and a board level to suppress those transient spikes. But power supply makers also have other reasons to push back against NVIDIA. Okay, so here's what transients actually are. We already mentioned that 30 series video cards can tax your power supply with beyond two times the specified power load of the GPUs on average, and these quick periods of power consumption are often referred to as transients. Not transients, but Transient. The term transient refers to a short-lived oscillation in a system caused by a sudden change of voltage or current or load. In this case, the transient is driven by the load, which is the GPU, and that manifests itself in the current. We can measure this in the wires of a power supply cable by detecting the magnetic field in and around the wire, and if you invest in high-end test clamps like we did, you can isolate those spikes even though they last mere microseconds in many scenarios. The voltage from a power supply is carefully regulated so that the signal going to the components stays within the expected parameters, which is usually plus or minus 5%. Since the power equation is P equals IV, if the voltage is mostly fixed and the load demands more power, then the power supply has to be able to vary its output current. This is pretty basic stuff. As for where transient comes back in, we're referring to that as basically microseconds to milliseconds max for spikes in current. One thing we've noticed in our own testing in the past, and this also tracks with what Nvidia has told us it notices in its own testing, is that the higher FPS but still GPU bound scenarios are more likely to cause undesirable effects, like this one. or just a crash, like we showed earlier. Now, it's not always that way, but it's a correlation where you're more likely to find one of these problems in those GPU-bound high frame rate scenarios. Whenever the GPU needs more power to operate more of its functional units simultaneously, there's a sudden power spike. Once that scene subsides, the power needed to drive all the different contributing blocks of the GPU drops back to normal. So this stuff we've just described, that's an example of transient load. 
but there's also transient response. The voltages are mostly fixed values at 3.3, 5, and 12 volts, so the temporarily spiked delivery comes in the form of larger amounts of current. The current spikes that are delivered based on GPU demand are what we would call transient response. When NVIDIA started listing graphics card power with the 10 series, the 1080 and the 1080 Ti were rated at 180 and 250 watts respectively. At that point, even with transients at two times the rated value, a 600 watt power supply would still have headroom to power the rest of the components. By the time the 20 series rolled in, the 2080 power target shifted up to 215 watts, but the 2080 Ti stayed locked in at 250 watts. Obviously, different vBIOSes could do more, but again, 600 to 650 watt power supplies would probably get you through even two times transients since the peak GPU power rating hadn't changed much. But the 30 series and upcoming 40 series are different. GPU power for the 3080 and the 3080 Ti are now listed at 320 and 350 watts, and that's before accounting for custom vBIOSes. That's a 100 watt increase in average power consumption, but a potential 200 watt increase in transient overhead requirements if you're looking at that 2x type spike. Now, the suggested power supplies are listed at 750 watts these days. So if a 2x transient occurred at the 350 watt rating, that only sort of leaves 50 watts of power for the rest of the system. But not really. That's not actually how it works. A 750 watt power supply might be able to power up to 975 watts of power, for example, for a short period of time before OPP trips or overpower protection. We've shown this in our power supply benchmarks and reviews in the past. Transients live up to their name. They come and go rapidly and can usually be mitigated by quality internal power supply components. But that's the problem. Manufacturers who compete on price aren't interested in quality. And as long as it looks like the blame is somewhere else, they don't care if your system shuts down because of something happening as a result of the video card. It's easier to just pass the buck and say it's NVIDIA's fault, and vice versa from NVIDIA to the PSU maker. Now, one of our sources at a power supply manufacturing company confirmed our findings and noted two to two and a half X transient spikes for existing 30 series cards. They, of course, complained about this and said that it's coming back to power supply manufacturers when customers have problems getting the system to stay up. But they also noted to us a significant concern about the RTX 40 series, where the manufacturer stated that part of the reason there have been some delays in the past might be related to trying to deal with transient loads from the GPU in the 40 series, because they're looking at upwards of two and a half to three X for the transient spikes. If that happens, and if the rumors that have been aligning to show a 400 watt to 450 watt GPU in the 40 series come to be true, you're looking at potential transient spikes upwards of a kilowatt. That's crazy. Now, to be fair, that might not come to pass. The cards aren't out yet, NVIDIA has time to correct for this and try and deal with it if they can. After receiving several viewer emails, our research found many complaints online revolving around 750 to 850 watt power supplies when matched with 3080s, 3090s, and 6900 XT GPUs from AMD. The common theme was graphics intensive applications, power supplies around the NVIDIA recommended 750 watts, and unexpected shutdowns and restarts. We even had our own lead from an EVGA 3080 crashing during NZXT H1v2 testing. When this failure happened, Patrick on our team doing the case testing sent the power supply over to Patrick Stone to do some bench testing with it and see if he could recreate the issue. Stone then came back with a detailed report that was internal only, and we'll put that on the screen. So this allows you to see some of our internal validation processes that don't always get published publicly because we use them just to make sure we're doing things right in other parts of the operation. But the lab report pretty much tells the story. And the power supply shown in that clip, that's an NZXT SFF power supply. That'll be relevant later, not because of NZXT this time, but because of small form factors. So we'll come back to that. So we need to talk numbers, and then we'll talk about methods this time. The testing, we did over 40 different combinations of hardware and software in order to look for these types of spikes and potential failures. And this took several weeks of research and data analysis, and that was just for NVIDIA 30 series cards. This also happens, at least to some extent, on AMD cards. We only looked at that a little bit for now. We'll look at that more if it starts to become more of a problem with the 7000 series. Uh, and certainly we'll be looking at the 40 series. But for now, the focus today is on the 30 series because it took weeks and weeks just to do that alone. Okay, so all of this needs testing and data. Our testing fell into four different stages for this project, 
and we ended up using some special equipment that we bought as well. So we employed some 10 to 100 amp clamping probes. We also used an 800 kilohertz sampling for the probes and the connection. We recorded 3 million data points across 12 milliseconds, so that's about 1.25 microseconds per data point, and we'll talk more about that later as well. And all of these equipment purchases were made possible by your support in our community on store.cameraSnexus.net, grabbing things like the mod mats, the toolkits, the coaster packs, and functional products from us, as well as our shirts, or on patreon.com slash cameraSnexus for bonus videos. Thank you for making it easy for us to buy unique and specific testing hardware for specific scenarios. Once we could consistently capture the transients, our next goal was to determine what software could be used to trigger those. So for this, we were looking to reliably produce transients. It was a slightly variable target, which made it difficult to dial in. And we ended up using a few different pieces of software, a few games and some other stuff more synthetic like Firmark or the Heaven Benchmark for something a bit older. And uh, we also wanted to determine which GPUs showed the worst transients. So again, we come back to the 40 different combined scenarios. The first chart we'll look at comes from Doom Eternal Testing. We experimented with lower resolutions that produced over 500 FPS, a 4K resolution that bogged down the frame rates, and we toggled ray tracing on and off in every scenario. The highest transient spikes were consistently produced in 4K with ray tracing on. So that's what we're showing in this chart. The Gigabyte 3090 stole the top spot for the highest transient spikes. The 100 microsecond peak average is 129% higher than the average power consumption shown in just Fermark, meaning the power over time plotted with something like NVIDIA's PCAT or with a, a normal current clamp that's slower. While gaming in 4K, this card can draw more than double its stable average power consumption. So the doubling, again, won't matter for your power bill because it's only 100 microseconds long at a time at, at most normally. But it will matter to the power supply and the motherboard choice because that's where the failures happen. The 3090 Ti was only 14 watts lower than the Gigabyte 3090 in its peak average 100 microsecond measurement, potentially due to better power design on the EVGA board or better firmware controls. Since we were focusing on the behavior of transients and their impact on system stability, we ended up using the Gigabyte 3090 in our initial shutdown tests. The two 3080s behaved similarly, with the FE hitting a 4.8% higher peak average than the Eagle. Cards in the same GPU family, like two 3080s, don't necessarily draw power the same way just because they have the same GPU. The board matters. Look at this 1080 Ti. It's been a little while since it was in the limelight, but it's back. The reason we threw it in this mix is because we wanted you to see that huge transients aren't something new. They've been around for at least three generations and definitely for longer, but it matters more as baseline power draw grows because we approach the power supply capacity people normally have. Rainbow Six Siege also showed large spikes. The 3090 Ti surpassed the 3090 with a 2.6% higher 100 microsecond peak average. The pair of 3080s show up next with the Eagle hitting 1.6% higher than the 3080 FE in the 100 microsecond measurement. Finally, the 1080 Ti still shows significant transient spikes across 100 microseconds. So again, it's not a new problem. It's just that baseline is new. So for example, this at the 1080 Ti number ends up at about half of the 3090 Ti's baseline average. We did all of this testing against several power supplies as well and a couple of motherboards. The answer to why one power supply might survive a transient spike and why another shuts down lies with the internal components. Output filtering caps help to buffer against periods of heavy current draw as they act as reservoirs for electrical charge. The higher the capacitance rating, the more charge the capacitor can store and generally the better it can withstand a rapid discharge. For the most part, you don't need to be laser focused on these capacitors but it could be used as a determining factor if two power supplies were otherwise comparatively almost completely the same and you were trying to decide which one to purchase. Of course, it gets a little ridiculous if you're shopping by capacitor, and there's a lot more to it than that, so it's not a great solution anyway. Now, small form factor power supplies are at more risk against transient spikes in terms of being knocked offline, getting shut down from an OCP trip or something. And the reason for that is there's just simply not as much room in a box this small for additional output capacitors. And further still, if the small form factor power supply is trying to be a budget small form factor power supply, there's more chance we'll have trouble with those higher end GPUs specifically. And it could be an 850 watt or 750 watt power supply, but if there's a significant spike and it's cheap and it's small, 
even though 850 is more than reasonable for the average power consumption of any GPU out in the consumer market today, that will still be enough with a sufficient transient spike in that scenario to shut it down, which is sort of what we're talking about today. Just to briefly go over the simple aspects of our testing, we have three new current clamps that are going with our existing oscilloscope setup. The oscilloscope already had standard 150 megahertz, 1x, 10x probes, and now we have the three new clamps that allow us to sample up to 800 kilohertz, which is awesome. Now these can be set to read as low as 10 amps, or for higher load scenarios like what we're testing today, they can go up to 100 amps. The reason we bought three of them isn't just because some video cards have three PCIe cables. It's actually because as a standard with current clamps, if you've used them, you know this already, the accuracy of the current clamp goes down or the range for error plus or minus the current reading uh, widens as the current goes up or as it approaches the maximum range of the clamp. So having three of them, regardless of how many cables there are, as long as they're used properly, it allows us to dial in the current reading to be sort of more towards the middle of the spec of the clamp and allow better accuracy. So as current flows through the wire, it creates a proportional magnetic field perpendicular to the wire. An iron alloy core in the clamp picks up on this magnetic field and concentrates it so that a connected Hall effect sensor can detect it. The Hall effect sensor then generates an output signal that's amplified and sent to the oscilloscope so that we can get an idea of how much current is flowing without having to slice the wire open. Non-invasive probing is great for temporary test setups like this. So we set our oscilloscope here to capture 3 million data points across 12 millisecond windows and because the clamps have an 800 kilohertz limitation, again, that's about 1.25 uh, microseconds per data point. But that's actually still plenty good. At this resolution, we're going to be able to see the problems or the transient spikes on video cards. And uh, the real challenge we ran into, actually, was handling the data, exporting it into some kind of software like Excel, and trying to process it. It was cumbersome, so we had to build some uh, some tools behind the scenes to deal with that as well. Another interesting aspect that we don't have airtime for on the main channel to go into today was getting the triggering right for each of these current clamps because uh, sometimes the amount of current that's detected in a wire, depending on the PCB design, is higher for, for cable one versus two versus three and vice versa. And this means that we have to manually check each cable for a trigger range to determine where it needs to detect and sort of capture data on the oscilloscope. So we spent some time doing that. The only other part of the oscilloscope setup was measuring the 12 volts output so we could get an accurate total power measurement. We back probed the PCIe output from the power supply to have a close to time synchronized power number. We wanted to know what was happening with the voltage when the current spiked, and we hypothesized that the current spikes would coincide with the voltage sags. And we wanted to capture the information to see if the sags were significant enough to matter in the final measurement. We also attempted to take into account that the Hall effect sensors had latency in their measurement. So we time shifted the voltage results to compensate if we saw that the voltage had a variance of greater than 1% over the interval. We actually generated don't even know, like a dozen other charts with all kinds of different data and analysis and cool stuff, but we ultimately just pulled a few for this video because it sort of told the story more or less in its entirety, and we were trying to keep this one a little more palatable for everyone. But if there's enough interest, maybe we'll run some extra data in a GN Extras video. You can subscribe below. So hopefully we've shed some light on what a transient is and how it works. Look, realistically, your computer is going through these all the time anyway. It's normal. Power supplies are built to handle it to a certain extent, and the components that sort of are responsible for these spikes are normally built in a way where they're not too exaggerated or extreme. The thing we're trying to point out to you, this isn't like a panic go buy a new power supply situation, and certainly if your computer's running fine now, you have nothing to worry about now with this build. But if you are having weird OCP trips, if you're having the system click and shut down and you don't understand why and it's not short circuiting, I mean, like literally short circuit protection tripping, then this might be why. And we've gotten a lot of complaints from people talking about their system shutting down randomly and they ask us for help troubleshooting. We're pretty sure it comes back to this. So hopefully this will help a lot of you who've been asking about this. But the real thing we wanted to get ahead of is the 40 series and whatever AMD is doing with its next series of GPUs because power consumption is going up right now. It tends to go in waves with the 400, 500 series cards like Fermi from NVIDIA were extremely 
high power consumption and running hot. And then it came back down for a while. They got more efficient. Now we're on the upswing again for power draw. So with transient spikes potentially being what manufacturers of power supplies are worried about to 2.5x or something for the 40 series, if that comes to pass, uh, or certainly some of the cheaper boards, it will be a problem, then you're going to, to run into more issues with power supply choice. One of the interesting things, though, talking with a few of the power supply manufacturers is that certain motherboards seem pretty resilient to this behavior. And that's great, but the problem is it gets ridiculous for anyone, reviewer or consumer, to try to put together this big complex matrix of power supply board GPU that all play well together, and it gets easier to just overbuy on the power supply, which isn't great either because it's a little bit wasteful, but it's more of a sure bet. So in our testing, we were able to consistently create transient current spikes through benchmarking and gaming. We didn't find anything significant enough to alter the monthly power bill, but we did lock in reproducible small form factor power supply shutdown scenarios, and we learned some things that might help us understand how transients could affect future GPU and power supply purchases. For the most part, the 10 series wasn't a problem since overall power consumption was lower. The 30 series seems to have had some problems with high transients, but these appeared to be limited to specific lines of power supplies like Seasonic being touchy with OCP, for example, and an EVGA GA line that had an initial problem that was quickly corrected. In our testing, we ran into some issues with small form factor power supplies, and it's definitely possible that they might not be a good fit with any 3080 or higher GPU, unless they're at least 850 watts. If you have one that's working well, though, and it's below that with a 3080 or higher, post a comment, let us know what it is, because that would be helpful for everyone. And that's what it comes down to. This is really complex as a topic. There are a lot of combinations of hardware, uh, and just as a community, we need to see what people are using. So if you have issues with your system failing, it'd be great in the manner described here. It'd be great to know what you're using for motherboard power supply and GPU. And if yours is staying up, but you're on a small form factor power supply, 3080 plus, uh, and under 850 watts, that'd be good to know too. So anyway, this isn't right now the end of the world with the 30 series. It's already been out for a few years. You'd know about it if you had a problem. But Hopefully this helps people who've had shutdowns they can't explain. It should point you towards the power supply and the GPU, frankly, but power supply is easier to replace than a GPU. And then uh, for the 40 series, just prepare to buy up a little bit if this trend continues, especially as we approach TDPs of 400 watts or whatever NVIDIA ends up cooking up, because that's where you're going to start getting into territory where suddenly you're 700, 750 watt power supply that's mid-range or lower end, it might not be able to soak a transient spike that's significant. So just trying to set the stage, get everyone ready for what's coming up. Thanks for watching. This was fun research for us. We have a lot more like this we want to do in our testing lab and setup. We've got the sound chamber up and running now. Some really cool data coming out. As always, our goal with this type of video is more to help people learn something and then troubleshoot better, plan better when they're building. Let us know if we've achieved that in the comments below. And subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.